Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's having a good one. So today, another highly requested video. The many requests I've gotten for this over the last couple of years, it's going to be how to set up your own diver, your own wire diver rig. So we're going to go from ground zero all the way to finish. We're going to go over the reel. Uh, we're going to go over how we're going to fill it, how we're going to spec it out on the fill calculator, the real fill calculator that I went over before in a previous video. And if you haven't watched that one yet, I'll put a link right up here. Just click on that one first. Figure out how to dial in that real fill or that line fill calculator and uh, it'll help you out tremendously. You know, not only with this application, but many more in the future. But we'll go over that. We'll spec it out how we're going to fill it. We'll spool it up. We'll uh, put it on a rod. We'll do all the knots. We'll do everything right to the point where you could walk out to your boat, go out there and go fishing with it. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so I got you tuned into the refill. What is this thing really? The real fill calculator. All right, again, if you haven't seen this already, again, go back and uh, watch the video, the one I put the link up for. Learn how to use this thing. Uh, in that video, the one where I spool up the lead core, there is a link down in the comments that you can go to. It will take you to greatlakesfisherman.com and you can download this thing. It is a completely, I mean, th th this thing comes in so handy so often. So it, it's a great tool to have, just another tool in the fishing toolbox for sure. So today we are going to, sorry, I had to step away for a second. Today we're going to be using a convector. 45D. Make sure I can zoom in or there we go. Convector 45D, the Akuma. One of the best reels out there for, for wire diver fishing. There's the specs on the back. So when you get your reels, you can find out where the specs are. They're normally on the box or somewhere on the reel itself. Let's get focus back in on that. So I already got this thing specced out. I know that uh, exactly what I want to be putting on here. So here's a little trick for you. You know, I always talk about having completely full reels. You know, fill them up to capacity. And the reason is, is they are more accurate. If all your reels are filled up to the same amount of line, you're, they're going to be more accurate amongst each other. They're going to read out the same. And I'm uh, sorry, something just kicked down behind me here. I didn't know what the heck that was. Um, they're going to read out the same and they're going to they're going to be faster because they're full. It, you know, it's just like a bigger tire spinning down the road. Uh, you know, it's going to gain more. It, you understand what I'm trying to say there? All right. Sometimes I'm not the best at explaining things, but you understand they're going to be faster if they're all the way full. So one little trick I'll tell you on these uh, the wire diver reels to fill them up to capacity. I, I normally put a thousand feet of wire on each one of these reels. So if somebody comes into the shop and they say, Hey, I want to I want a wire reel filled up. I'll say, okay, it's normally I put a thousand feet of wire on there. Um, do you want me to put back or on the back so that it will fill it up? Because a thousand feet of wire on the Convector 45D does not fill it up to the rim. You got to put some backer on there. Some people want it, some people don't. Um, I suggest it. You know, if you call and you ask me for a wire diver reel and you don't tell me that you want the backer on there, I typically don't put it on. But if you do mention it or I mention it, hey, you understand where I'm going with that. It's good to have backer on there to fill that thing up. So the back we're going to be using is Berkeley Big Game 50 pound. Might as well go big so you don't have to put so much on there. I got that dialed in right there in that box. I got my core which is the wire. The wire is 0 0.015 in diameter. No leader because we're going straight to a swivel. That'll make more sense a little later. That tells me I need 75 yards. Um, 75 yards. Hold on. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. 75 yards in packer, 50 pound, and 333 yards uh, in my wire. 333 yards is just about a thousand feet of wire, and that's what you want on there. So let's get this thing cooking, and uh, we'll get this thing all set up for you. Okay, so here we go. We got everything set up here on the Berkeley metering machine. Again, not everybody has a Berkeley Berkeley metering machine, but of course this can still be done easily at home or anywhere you want. Just remember, whenever you are spooling a reel using any kind of, uh, you know, whatever kind of spool that you're spooling off of, just remember never take the line off the ends like that. 
Make sure it's coming off the spool, just like the spool was rolling down the road. That is the biggest tip I can give you on that. Otherwise, you are going to have some massive, nasty, nasty tangles. All right, so let's put the back on first. Again, I said 75 yards of 50 pound big game. We'll get that on here. Get this reel filled up. Now, I showed you before what I do here for my knots on this. Some people use an arbor knot, some people use other knots. I just use a double overhand. It works just fine. It holds really well. It's a little bit bigger knot. I get that, but uh, you, you get down there, you know, to the bottom there. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Trim that off nice and close. I like to get my first few wraps started by hand, just so I know that it's gripping onto the spool. There we go. All right, 75 yards, 50 pound, big game going on. Now it's going on. Okay, we got our 75 yards of 50 pound on there. Get that trimmed off there. Oh, that's a good sound, doesn't it? Makes me just can't wait for summer. All right, let's get our wire put on here. So I'm sure a lot of questions are gonna be out there. What wire should I use? You know, what's the best one out there? And honestly, everyone, yeah, it really boys not a lot of this is a lot to do or like to do with the Chevy versus Ford thing again. You know, you you get a brand um, that you use for many, many, many years and you, you grow a uh, relationship with it. You know, that's my brand, whether it be Blood Run, whether it be Torpedo, whether it be Mason, whether it be whatever. You know, that if you trust that brand, that's your brand. And <laughs> I've seen people, you know, getting massive arguments over this thing. Um, really. Uh, with no factual basis other than it's always been their brand so that's fine if it's your brand you know if i use something different than you or somebody else does hey we respect that i respect that we should all respect that but today i'm going to be using mason mason's a decent a decent um a really good wire actually a good seven strand um I, i'm going to be honest with you last year i spooled up my diver rods my wire diver rods I, i'm sorry i'm storytelling now but I spooled up my wire diver rods with Blood Run. I've always had good luck with Blood Run. Last year, um, my Blood Run on my boat and a few other boats around here, it was breaking. I lost a really big fish uh, with my with my wire breaking on my uh, wire diver rod. I'd never had a problem with Blood Run in the past. I doubt it was something or it is something that's going to be, or it's, you know, I, I, my feeling is it was a fluke. I, everybody gets a bad batch every now and then. I'm sure Blood Run is no exception. So I'm not trash talking Blood Run in any way. But I did see enough things last year where I had to go in and I had to change over. And I changed over to the Mason. And I really do like this stuff. Uh, it's pretty. It's cheaper wire. You know, cheaper in cost, I guess. But uh, as far as quality goes, I like it. And I didn't have any more problems with it. Now this year, will I go back to Blood Run? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, it's really hard to say. I know I'll get another at least one more season probably out of my Mason. After that, there's a good chance I'll go back to something else. Maybe it'll be Blood Run. Maybe it'll be something else. But, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say here, long story short, um, not really, but, you know, just because it's not your brand don't doesn't mean that it's not a decent brand. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right. Anyway, let's get this set up. All right, so I'm sure the question out there right now is what knot do we use to attach wire to mono? And I'm just going to use a double uni knot. And the reason being, and this is an ugly knot, <laughs> when, you, when you attach wire, seven strand wire to mono, it is an ugly knot. But the thing is, I'm putting a thousand feet of wire on here, 333 yards I'm putting on there. If you get down to that junction point, if you get down to where those two are combined and joined, something's gone wrong. And uh, you either got the, the, the biggest king in the lake on there or you're snagged on a submarine. I don't know which. Um, but yeah, if you get down to that, that uh, junction point, something has gone wrong. You better turn your boat around and go after it because it is a world record fish or something crazy is going on. So anyway, double uni knot. Let's get this thing strung up. Right, again, you just go lay your lines right down along each other. 
you know, obviously the mono's pointing that way, the wire's pointing that way. I take my line or my wire, just make a loop. And here's my little one of my little secrets. I'll get under the light so maybe you can see a little better. Some people try to make the loop so it's on top, you know, by, by on top, I mean like up above the mono. If I make it down below the mount or the other side, you know, so it's going down around the bottom of it, that seems to work better for me. So I'm just gonna throw about five twists on here. And honestly, that's plenty right there. And I'm just gonna cinch that side down the best I can. And it doesn't cinch down great, but it does work. And like I've done before, I'm just going to turn it right around so I'm working the opposite way, like keeping my smart hand, you know, the one that I'm using. Just going to make that loop again on the bottom so it's below my other side. And four or five twists over that. I didn't do myself any favors here. I left this side a little short. We'll make it work. Okay. Cinch that down on that side semi tight. And we're just gonna bring them right together. I'm not even gonna lubricate this thing because like I said, it's not gonna get down to it ever anyway. It's just there to hold it. And you know, it's not, it's not ugly, ugly. It is just a, it's a big knot when you, when you put 50 pounds combined with wire. Anyway, don't use your scissors on the wire. Don't, uh, save your scissors. I've learned that the hard way. Use some uh, side cutters there. You want to dull out a pair of scissors, use it on wire a few times and uh, you'll definitely dull them out. All right, let's get this set up. This is really one of the easier spooling jobs that there are. This, this, is, not, this is not a difficult one right here. All right, I got my wire started down there. Now I just got to put a thousand feet of wire on here. So let's go ahead and do that. You know. If you're doing this at home, if you want to put a thousand on, hey, that's great. Um, or if you just want to watch it, you know, you're going to get pretty full of the top anyway. If you just want to watch it and just kind of eyeball it when you get close enough to the top for your comfort level, that works too. Maybe it's 970, maybe it's 1,050, maybe it's 1,400 feet. Who knows? But uh, if that's what you want to do, that's fine also. But anyway, let's get this thing spooled up. Okay, so there we go, 333 yards or roughly a thousand feet of wire on there. You can see that it filled up pretty nicely. That gives you a nice full reel. A lot more torque, a lot more cranking power, a lot more speed. So I'm sure some of you out there are asking, you know, why not, you know, if you got to put backer on there, why not just use a smaller reel? And this is just my opinion, but a little bit bigger reel, again, it's going to give you more torque. It's going to give you more capacity, so you're still going to get more speed if you want it. Um, you know, you got to be careful with divers, though. Speed sometimes is exactly what you don't want. But it will give you a fuller spool, and that will give you more, more torque and more control over that fish. So that's why I think the Convector 45D is an excellent, excellent choice for wire divers. Love these things. They work wonderful. You know, Saltis as well, Daiwa Saltis. You know, the cold waters as well, also excellent reels. And again, if you got something out there that works for you, hey, stay with it. You know, confidence is a, is a big part of fishing. So I'll say this, I try to say this as often as I remember to, this is just my way of doing things. Um, it's just another tool that you can put in your fishing toolbox. You know, on the, on the last video I did, or one of the last videos where I did the, uh, I showed you the uh, Dipsy Diver setup with the leader length and everything, and I got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, well i don't know if the comments were on youtube or maybe they were on facebook it was one i think it might have been facebook but a lot of people saying hey you know you don't need to do that you don't need to run 18 foot leaders i run six foot leaders that's all you need um again the, the caveat is this is my way of doing things if you don't want to run what i run or you don't want to do it the way i do it still respect it no worries i have no problem with that but uh you know it, it, i just it kind of caught me as amusing a little some people on facebook saying Hey, I do it this way. That's all you need to do. You know, th there's not ever one exact answer when it comes to fishing. You can never say this is the way to do it, and that's all you got to do. You can't do that. You're gonna you're gonna short sell yourself so much. Keep your mind open. Try different things. That's all I'm trying to say here. You know, there is no one end answer. But anyway, 
let's uh, let's move into getting this thing onto a rod and getting it all set up so somebody actually we're going to put this right up for sale here in tangle tackle also so if you're looking for a wire diver rod uh this is going to be for sale spooled up by yours truly but anyway let's uh let's get this thing taken care of all right got the wire cut we'll take it off the machine here all right Let's go find a good partner for this thing. We'll set it right up here for now. Hey, by the way, glass countertops in bait shops is not ever a good idea because when people come and set 15 and 16 pound cannonballs down on your glass countertops, this is a, that's the result you're gonna get. And uh, hey, we're, we're changing that out here though. Anyway, let's find a rod for this thing. All right, a little loud back here. The bait tanks are going. Ah, uh, the minnows are looking good. Let's go with a nine foot. All right, you can hear me a little better now. Let's go with a nine foot Akuma Convector Pro. See if you can see that okay. Yeah, Akuma Convector Pro wire line rod. Nine foot, the uh, spec model on this is CPS-W-902MH, stands for medium heavy. These Convector Pro rods are my new favorite Dipsy rods. I love these things. Show you these a little bit here. Stainless steel guides, not the rollers. I, I'm not a fan of the rollers, I've said that in the past. Twilly tips already, already installed on these things. Already installed on these bad boys. So this thing is ready to rock and roll as soon as you put the business on it. When we got them in the shop, we got them for $99.99 in the shop. Nice. All right. Let's, uh, let's get this thing set up, shall we? Now, somebody's probably asking, you know, why don't I like roller rods? And to be honest, they, they work okay. <sighs> but the problem is sometimes they don't work okay. And uh, they are tremendously more expensive than uh, the $99.99, I'll tell you that. There's some out there that are three or $400 and up, and way up past that. For, for 100 bucks, you're getting a really good rod here. We got these in nine and 10 foot. Um, I highly suggest the nine footers for your low divers and the 10 footers for your high divers. That's what we run on uh, on my boat, on Jim's tournament boat, on a lot of other charters around here as well. That's what they're running now. And uh, the, the problem that I've had with roller rods in the past is you know, where the roller is, that line can skip off onto the side, can get crimped into there in the dark or early morning, late night fishing. You get a line that gets down inside that roller in some way, and you're trying to get that out of there. And especially if you got a big fish on there, you're in trouble. So I like to keep it simple and uh the stainless steel guides are for me the simplest way to do it all right let's get this reel on here though you ever put a reel on a rod and found out later that uh <laughs> got it all set up and then all of a sudden realized that you put it on backwards i've done that yeah i've done this before got the rod on there got it seated it was screwed down on there just like this and uh, then I went to run the wire or the line out, you know, up through the guides and realized just how dumb I was right then. I put the reel on backwards. I've done it. I think most of us probably have. Or if you haven't, you probably will. Now, am I going to put, I'm not going to put the uh, the clamps on the back here. These, these Akumas do come with the clamp system. They'll lock that reel onto the rod. I typically don't. Um, a lot of guys do. A lot of gals do. I just don't. That's just my way again. If that's not your way, I completely respect that. No worries. All right, reels on there. Let's get this thing strung up. Make sure you guys can see me okay. 
Watch out, you'll get loops in your line like that. Don't ever pull tight when you get a loop in your line. That thing will cinch right down and put a little crimp right there. It'll weaken your line in a heartbeat. Just take your time, work it out slow. Wire's a different animal. It can be a little bit real hard to work with, just different to work with. And then for those of you that do not know or have never seen a twilly tip, the reason for that twilly tip, it really all that is is a spring on the end of the rod. And the reason is that is where all your pressure is going to be. When that fish is fighting, all that pressure is going to be right there at the tip. So if you leave a stainless guide on there, it's, you're probably going to groove it out. You're probably going to put a little notch in that thing. That spring right there, though, takes all the tension out. And all you got to do is the wire just runs right up straight through that thing. And that takes away the problem of grooving out your, your top of line guide. All right, now let's put a swivel on here. I'll show you the knot I use to attach a swivel. We do have a, a video out on this knot, but uh, we can do it right now also. Let me find one. Let's see what we got over here in the Junko drawer. -o. The overfill drawer. The drawer where things go to die be lost for all time we're gonna need a big swivel I suggest the Dreamweaver size 6 swivels you don't need to have a uh, you don't need to have a ball bearing swivel for this a barrel swivel will be just fine it's not gonna be rotating in any way so barrel swivels fine I just gotta find one There's always one in this drawer, except right now. Okay. We'll look someplace else. Let's take a little walk. Let's see what we got up here for swivels. Oh, uh, we're out of Dreamweaver swivels. Do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, there we go. Well, for this intent and purposes, this is a ball bearing. It's a DS6. That's the size you want, the DS6. You don't have, like I say, you don't have to have ball bearing. If you got one and that's what you're going to use, it's not going to hurt anything. But we're going to pop this open. I'll take it out of inventory and put it in the junk drawer because I'm sure we'll need one later on. All right, so this is a very simple knot, but it's very strong. You know, it uh, it only takes a second or two to tie also. All right, so all you're gonna do, loop your, loop your wire, don't crimp it down, just make a loop. You're gonna go through the hoop on the swivel. You're gonna bring that loop then right over the swivel Essentially, you're just making a half hitch. You cinch that down. Okay. And then you're just going to tie an overhand knot just a couple inches, maybe four or five inches up above it, or however tall, however high you want to go. So, overhand knot, just make a loop. Cinch that overhand knot down. And then just trim off that excess right there. Let me get the uh, side cutters. We'll do that. And there we go. That is it. That is the knot right there. That thing is all set up. That thing is ready to go fishing. This will be for sale in the shop. I don't know what the price tag will be on that. Uh, the rod is 100, the reel's a 90, I think. And the wire, I think, is probably around 30. You know, somewhere in that price range. But So what I do when I put this thing on my boat and I'm ready to go fishing or at the end of the day when I'm done fishing, there is no little hook holder on this rod. 
you know, down here, there's normal, sometimes a hook holder. I just clip that thing right there on my eye guide and just reel it down. And then it's right there when I grab it, it's ready to go. Some guys I've seen, they don't like hooking things on their, on their eyelets. I get that. Um, some guys will bring it down right here. Make sure you can see. I'll bring it down and just clip it right down there. In fact, I can do that to show you. I'll bring it down and just put it right under that thing. It's not something I do, but that's another way you can do it right there just to hold it if you don't want to put it in the line guide. Any which way, whatever uh, way works for you is the best way. All right, that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for coming along on this wire wire rod journey. I appreciate everybody watching. Hey, don't forget to watch our seven o'clock live fishing reports every Sunday. Um, lots of good people there, lots of good information, and uh, we're still doing lots of giveaways too, so that's always fun. All right, here's a thumbs up for everybody. Take care, be safe. We'll see you soon.